You're listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible is Literature. Hi, this is Father Mark Bulos, and you are listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature podcast. In today's episode, Father Paul offers a practical tip to pastors and teachers. As in the case of the specific example of the Decalogue, when someone says, I know what the Bible says, ask them to recite it. I am delighted to introduce Father Paul on the Bible as Literature podcast, Tarazi Tuesdays. You have that passage that we can entitle Theophany, the appearance of God, and you have the thunders and the lightnings and a thick cloud. It's very interesting that you have thunders and lightnings refer to the cloud. Okay, you have things that are unusual. And then the sound is much more important. Okay, because Lightning and thunder practically are the same phenomenon. You see and hear, but the essential phenomenon is the sound. And you have it reflected in the very loud trumpet blast. And all the people who were in the camp, guess what? Trembled. Actually, were terrified is the better translation of the original Hebrew. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. Notice the interesting thing. It's not that God came down to the camp, because that's very dangerous. Because if you do that, it could be to destroy the people. That's why you have to keep God, and I know my colleagues, the Orthodox, don't like that, at bay. Just keep him away from you. When he invites you, remember to tremble with the fear of God. And they approach and they stand at the foot of the mountain. And again, stressing that phenomenon. And Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord descended upon him in fire. And fire, remember, is the expression of judgment in the Bible. And the smoke of it went up like the smoke of a kiln, and the whole mountain quaked greatly, very powerful. Notice earlier how the people were terrified, and also the mountain reacts in the same way. And the importance of the thunder, as I mentioned earlier, is clear in 19, where Moses spoke and God answered him in thunder, which is tricky in English because the original is very powerful. Bukol, through the sound, through the voice. And if you know Arabic, the call is an utterance. You hear the voice. It's the same mouth of your mother that tells you I love you and then seven minutes later she yells at you and scolds at you. She's still using the same instrument which is the voice that utters words. It's the teens that transform that into I didn't understand what my mother is saying. She was just uttering sounds. No! The call is what is communicated through the words that are said to you and make you tremble. There you have it in the text. It's not Paul Tarazi that says that. That's what the people say about me. Father Paul says whatever he wants his things. I'm just reading with you the original Hebrew, which you do not know. And then you stand and give a sermon of 17 minutes to your parish. 
you know a little bit of Greek, a little bit, a few words, you don't know Hebrew, and you preach for 17 to 20 minutes. Now, if you're telling your stories, I have no trouble with that. But you garb it and present it, you packaged it as though you are explaining what the Bible is saying. It's high time, friends, that you wake up. That's all I can say. And in 20, God reaches the top of the mountain and Moses goes up to the mountain. And 21, again, let's spend some time on that because it's high time that you realize it and you don't go like this, faking sainthood and smiling when you approach the Lord. No, listen to that. Go down and warn the people lest they break through to the Lord to gaze and many of them perish. One more time, let's remember, God is a judge that sits on the throne of judgment and you are always prostrated fully so that the justice of the judge be assured. He does not judge faces as we hear in Galatians. Because if you know who you are, he may side with you or against you. No, he just judges cases. So this not seeing God has nothing to do with seeing the unseen. Friends, friends, I am a cradle orthodox. I knew all these things when I was taught in the Orthodox Youth Movement before I went to learn theology in Romania. In Romania, people were amazed, even my professors, that I knew already three quarters of what they taught my colleagues. And let also the priests, whose business is to be next to God, to be consecrated, consecrate themselves, lest the Lord break out upon them. Here, just very quickly, the breakthrough and break out, it's two different verbs in Hebrew. Let's not spend our time on that. 23, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai. For thou thyself discharge us, saying, set bounds upon the mountain and consecrate it. And the Lord said to him, go down and come up, bringing Aaron with you, but do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to the Lord, as he breaks out against them. Very important, in other words, it is Moses who brings down the message to the priests, including Aaron. And we talked about that earlier when he said that Moses will become like a god to Aaron, who is his prophet. Prophet is the recipient of the message. And that is the powerful belittling, not only of the kings in the Bible, but also the priests. Notice how at the beginning of Ezekiel, we are told the priest Ezekiel was exiled in a place where there was no temple, which means that he was not functioning as a priest anymore, but from now on as a prophet of the Lord. One more time. The texts of the Bible are interconnected, friends. And then in 20, we have, uh, everybody knows that uh, chapter, which is the famous Decalogue. Now, very interesting, that word that is from the Greek, and it is transliterated to Latin. The important words in the Vulgate, very interestingly, are transliterated, like ecclesia, it becomes ecclesia. There is no ecclesia in Latin. That's an invitation for you to remember that the original is Greek. And here the Decalogue is taken from the Greek, which is the language of the Septuagint. But I want to draw your attention that in Hebrew we have 
And God spoke all these words, saying. That's why many theologians today refer to the Decalogue as the ten words, and thus ten statements. This I would like you to teach to the people. There are ten statements. And that's why you have to test the people when they tell you, I know the Decalogue. You say, recite it or recite them and then you will know whether they know or not. Because the ten words are ten different words. So that's what you have, the Dubarim. And this becomes essential because the title of the book of Deuteronomy is precisely these are the words. And the first statement, very important, which is not a commandment. That's why to call it a commandment, it's silly. You cannot compare the first statement, the first word, with thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not commit adultery. But here the people tell me, well, thou shalt not erect a statue, but the shall not erect a statue is secondary to the first part of the statement, which is the reason for it. I brought you out of Egypt, the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me, Alpanai, to my face. Let's repeat what I said hundreds of times. People say, so there are no other gods. If there are no other gods, why should God refer to them? Silly Hellenic philosophy. And lately, Father Timothy and I were sending to each other articles written by so-called priests and theologians, Orthodox of North America, praising Platonism. We are to be Christian Platonists. Very important to be Platonic. Without him, we cannot. I mean, people believe that I'm making it up. But Timothy Law tells me, you have been vindicated lately, Father Paul. And I'm vindicated. That's what the people are still teaching powerfully. Plato is the teacher. It is not Christ of Matthew 23. It is Plato. And unless we dismiss that, which is almost an impossibility, but the Lord is our hope that he can do the things even we consider impossible. So what is God saying here is that when you are before me, don't do as Rachel did hiding the deities of her family. And you know the story is under her rear end on the camel. It's a phenomenal text. But I dealt with that earlier. Don't bring the sillinesses with you. This is how the prophets refer to the emptiness of the other gods. When you speak about something, then the something is a thing which is there. So what is the meaning of this? Is that in my presence, you may not have this, but the trickiness of scripture is that you are always in my presence. The Bible as Literature is a production of the Ephesus School Network.